formation for CMU. Cooper back to throw it. Here comes the blitz. Sidesteps the defender, throwing it deep downfield. It's caught. McCord's got it. He's got open space. 40, 30, 20. Ben McCord's going to walk into the end zone. What a play by Cooper Rush. And Central Michigan strikes again. And the Chippewas go up big, 23-0. The Chippewas wore these matte helmets for the first time on Saturday, and they picked up their first win under head coach John Bonamigo. We've got the highlights of the game for you next on Chippewa Rewind. Welcome into our second episode of Chippewa Rewind presented by the Morning Sun. What a Saturday at Kelly Short Stadium as Central Michigan took down Monmouth 31 to 10. I'm Adam Jackson and joining me is head coach John Bonamigo and first of all congrats on your first win. Thanks Adam. It's great. I can't wait to do it again. It's your first win as a head coach. How much did that mean to you? Well it means a lot especially here at CMU. Um, you know, I've said it a hundred times I'll say it a thousand more. This place, this school, this football program means a lot to me. It's personal. And uh, we knew it was coming eventually. Didn't come as soon as we had hoped, but I'm just glad to get that first one out of the way. Well, let's dive right into the highlights. The Chippewas, unlike last week, got the football first, and you get things going with Cooper Rush finding the receivers, different ones on a couple of these plays. He, he finds Mark Chapman here. Yeah, Cooper scrambling out of the pocket there. Our scramble rules take into effect. Find, finds Mark there for a quick completion and first down. He continues to spread the wealth next to Anthony Rice for 14 more yards. Yep, again, good pocket here. He steps up and uh, nice easy throw over the middle there. Uh, good catch, good uh, catch by Anthony. I think they thought the ball was out there, replayed, uh, stu stuck with the original ruling. Uh, again, don't like to see the ball on the ground, but I do like to see the change move. That was on a third down completion, and then again, another third down completion as Mark Chapman comes up. Yeah, with we a big did catch. a really good job of converting on third and down. I think we got in too many third and longs overall, but uh, again, just to be able to keep the ball moving up the field, again, Mark there, uh, open on the sideline, nice pass by Cooper, and again, moving the chains. Have a lot of success through the air on that opening drive, then you finish it off with a run again by Mark Chapman. Good job here, uh, blocking on the edge there. We get uh, Beamish pulling from the center position, and uh, good run by Mark, stretching out there to get to the pylon, and uh, touchdown. Seven to nothing, Chippewas, we fast forward after you guys get a stop. Again, you go on another touchdown drive, same as last time, Cooper starts with a lot of success through the air, this time to Chapman again. Yep, good, good uh, curl route there. A uh, little high, nice job by Mark going up and getting that. And uh, love to see those chains moving. Cooper Rush on this next one. We saw this a little bit later in the game, able to scramble, and he finds Ben McCord on a third down completion. Yep. He just checks up right here, uh, finds a wide open Ben McCord on the sideline, or hurdles a the guy there, and uh, you know, Ben, we knew was going to be a great weapon for us. Uh, just continues to get better and better all the time. So 14 to nothing after one quarter of play. You guys are driving, and then here's the next touchdown. Corey Willis finds the end zone for the first time as a Chippewa. Yeah, excellent job of him of setting up the uh, corner, gave him a really hard, nice hard stem inside, uh, broke out to the fade route, uh, wide open, perfect pass by Cooper, and uh, it's great to see one of my favorite guys get in the end zone. I love Corey Willis. All right, Coach, well, how about some defense? You get a sack from Nate Brisson fast on this next play. Good pursuit. He stayed with it. Another young player, freshman playing in the game. Uh, you redshirted last year. Uh, it's good to see B fast get some uh, juice up the field there and, uh, and get a much-deserved sack. So you do end up getting the stop, and then Anthony Rice once again comes up with a terrific catch in traffic. Anthony's done a good job of, uh, of hanging on to the football. Uh, getting open and just proving to be a reliable guy for us. Talk about Brian Evie. He hits his field goal. You go up 17 nothing, but he's been perfect to start the year. How important is that? Knock on wood. Yes, sir. He is three for three. Um, I've been very impressed with him throughout spring practice, training camp. Uh, he's got the right mindset for a kicker. He's very even keeled. Not very much bothers him. Uh, he's very uh, methodical in his approach. You like to see that in a place kicker. 
I think he's got a bright future here and possibly one uh, later on. So it's 17 to nothing Chippewas, and then you get your first big play offensively this season. How about this from Cooper Rush and then Ben McCord's wide open? Well, uh, Cooper does a great job there avoiding a rush. Uh, pocket broke down a little bit there and uh, got single coverage by a linebacker on Ben McCord. That's a mismatch. Great throw by Cooper leading Ben down the field and uh, Ben just finishes off. Nobody's going to catch him. 83 yards later, it's 24 to nothing Chippewas. Then Monmouth starts to go on a drive. It looks like Josh Koss gets an interception, but he just can't get a foot down. Can't get that other foot down, and uh, great break on the ball. Um, you know, this drive got helped out by a couple penalties that we committed, uh, but, uh, you know, great break there by Josh. You can't keep them off the board. They do get a field goal. So about three and a half minutes left in that first half, you get the football back up 24-3. Again, another third down conversion through the air. Yep. Uh, again, good pocket starts up front with the offensive line to pass protection. If we give Cooper time uh, and we allow him to step up and deliver throws, uh, he's going to find open receivers. Here's one of your favorites again, Corey Willis. Looked like he got into the end zone, but ends up falling at the one yard line with this catch. Yeah, we really had a little miscommunication. Corey kind of bailed out there. He ran the wrong route, ended up making the catch, and, uh, you know, uh, originally ruled a touchdown, then reviewed, brought back to the one. And then how about the similarity from last week to this week, ending the half, you tried the Joe Bocci mm -hmm. play action last week, penalties right. caused it to come back, you get it here. Yep, we get it, good job. Uh, glad to see Joe get in the end zone, glad to see Cooper get another uh, touchdown pass. So you get the extra point, it's 31-3, to that's the end of the first half. Coach, what did you think of your team's play through the first 30 I minutes? I thought our first half we came out exactly and played the, the style of football that we were capable of. Um, you know, thought our energy level was, was outstanding. And, uh, you know, I was very pleased with where we were at coming, at, coming in there on a, after a, a great half of football. All right, so the Chippewas are up by 28 points. We'll come back and have the second half next for you right here on Chippewa Rewind. Welcome back to Chippewa Rewind. As we said, the Chippewas in front at the break over Monmouth, 31 to three. Coach, they get the ball to start that second half and they put together probably one of their better drives of the day. Yeah, I, I think uh, they did a good job. Um, personally, I don't think we played as well coming out in the third quarter as we were capable of. I think uh, we fell victim to human nature. I think um, as humans, and Coach Parcells used to talk about this all the time, uh, we're much, more wired to handle adversity than we are success sometimes. I think when, uh, if you're a competitor, uh, if you have any fight in you at all, I think when you're backed in a corner, your instincts are to come out fighting. And, and I think sometimes when you have success, you, uh, you maybe relax a little bit. And uh, hopefully this will be a lesson that we learn from and, and move forward as a football team because, man, you gotta keep your foot on the gas and, and come out like it's zero zero every single time. And um, so um, I was a little disappointed in that. You know, I felt uh, we needed to come out and play the second half just like we did the first half. But uh, we'll get those things corrected. And uh, our guys are, are smart enough to understand that, know the difference between that, and know that, that that's what championship teams do. Do you feel like there's some different approaches you might want to take at the half, or is that just something that'll come along with the team? I think it comes along with maturity and just being in those situations. You know, uh, I don't know how many times uh, in the past this team has gone into the locker room with a big lead at halftime. Sure. So uh, I think that comes with, uh, with experience and maturity. They get down deep in your own territory. You force them to a third and three, and they're able to, to hook up for six yards to keep mm -hmm. the drive going. Right. Well placed pass. We're in single coverage there. Uh, you know, we got to break on the ball a little bit better there. Uh, but we still got a chance here coming up. And here comes the play from them a little bit different look. They go a change of direction and get into the end zone. Yeah, great, uh, great play call by them. But really, this is, this is on us. We had missed, two missed tackles there right there, point, point of attack. 
uh, again, you talk about playing with an edge and, and being a great football team, we just got to do a better job there of, of tackling. You threw the ball really well in the, in the first half, didn't have a ton of rushing yards, but this was your biggest run of the day for 15 with Martez. Good job here by Martez, good, well blocked, gets to the outside, and uh, you know, we like to see that, like to see more of that. That drive ends up ending, but then again for the second straight week, another great special teams play. Coach. Yeah, I thought this was kind of like our wake up call here in that second half. And I thought when uh, when Tony made that hit, I think it, it got everybody going and it said, all right, and we just kind of went, all right, here we go. We fast forward to the fourth quarter, and here's Kayvon Frazier with just a tremendous open field tackle. Really pleased with Kayvon and, and what he's done, really both our safeties, he and uh, Tony and East, those guys are, are physical players. They play the pass well. Uh, they come up and play the run well. Great open field tackle. Um, just really happy with Kayvon and, and, uh, and where he's headed. That was a third and short. They end up going for it. And then a terrific effort play from Cantavellas to come all the way across and make great the Great job just trimming the fat, as we call it, from the backside, making a great wrap and roll tackle. All right, Coach, so we continue on. They're a little bit deeper in your territory, but their threats ended with a terrific play by Tony Anise. What would you think of this athleticism? I thought that was as good a catch as I've seen all day or, or since I've been here. Just stretched out, excellent job. It's one of the reasons why I love that kid so much. Happy for him. He gets it on his birthday, too. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> Tony Anise comes up with the interception. That seals it. 31 attends the final, Coach. What did you think of your team's play? I thought we played great in the first half. I uh, thought there were things we could have done better in the second half. There's a lot to learn from this game film. Uh, it's a, a victory. It's a win. It's a, it's a game that goes in the left-hand column. That's where we got to start stacking them. And um, it's an opportunity for us to, to grow and get better as a football team. You got to lead the band after the game in the Chippewa fight song. Probably one of the highlights of my life. Um, the only thing that I'm a little remiss about is that there weren't enough students in that student section that hung around to celebrate that victory for us. Uh, I'm really proud of our student section. You guys showed up. It was great. I thank you again. My hat's off to you. Now stick around for the fun. Hang out for the end of the game and help us celebrate. Hopefully the students can get a little bit more involved. The next home game, of course, homecoming for the Chippewas. But next week coming up, Central Michigan heads to the Dome to take on Syracuse. We'll break down that game and preview it for you next on Chippewa Rewind. take on an opponent that they saw last year. Syracuse, of course, came to Kelly Short Stadium. Coach Bono wasn't here, but the Chippewas fell 40-3. to Coach, you weren't on the sidelines for that game, but will you take a look at that game film coming into this next week? Absolutely. Um, there's always value in that, particularly when you look at returning players, matchups, and you know just how, they, how, how you matched up versus an opponent. It's your first game on the road in a unique situation. It's in a dome as well. Is there any kind of different preparation you will have with the team? No, not really. I think uh, the fact that it is, in, is indoors makes it a very neutral environment. It uh, doesn't favor either team. Uh, obviously, uh, in that particular venue, uh, noise can be a factor. That's something we'll have to try to simulate uh, during the w course of the week which if you ever come to one of our practices, we always have the music blaring all the time. So Scott Schaefer's in his third year as head coach over at Syracuse. What can you expect to see from a Scott Schaefer coach team? Well, they're wide open on offense and they're always very good on defense. He's a defensive coach. Uh, he was a defensive coordinator under Doug Marone who left to go to the Buffalo Bills. Um, so they're a very uh, pressure oriented defense and uh, you know, that's a uh, program that I have a lot of respect for, very steeped in, in tradition, and uh, I expect it to be a great football game. Well, the Chippewas take on Syracuse. That's a 12 o'clock start. Coach, we wish you the best of luck next week in trying to get two wins in a row. Thank you very much. 
All right, that's going to wrap up our second show. Join us again next Monday as we'll break down the Chippewas game at Syracuse. For head coach John Bonamigo, I'm Adam Jaxa. We'll see you next week.